Hi, my name is Laura Zacks, and I'm the manager of social innovation at Etsy. I'm here to talk about how arts, crafts, and other maker projects can be used to create meaningful educational experiences. I'll begin by giving an overview of Etsy and how our vision of an Etsy economy is deeply aligned with the maker movement taking place in the education sphere. Next, I'll describe an actual maker project that we've done here at Etsy. I'll talk to you about the skills that can be learned through making and then give you tips on how to design maker projects. Finally, I'll leave you with additional resources for you to explore on your own. For those of you who aren't familiar, Etsy is a marketplace where makers and craftspeople can sell their creations all over the world. On the slide here, you can see a handful of the 1.6 million sellers on Etsy. We also recently launched Etsy Manufacturing, a platform where those makers can connect with manufacturers to help produce their goods. Through this platform, we help to foster the growth of maker-driven independent businesses. The values inherent in our sellers, in our marketplace, and in our vision of an Etsy economy are deeply aligned with the maker movement taking place in the education sphere. Making, experiential education, 21st century learning, whatever name you call this educational model, brings the creativity and passion that we see in the Etsy marketplace into the classroom. This learning is bottom up, Students are actively leading and shaping their learning experiences, rather than passively receiving information from teachers or textbooks. These learners learn from risk-taking, from mistakes, and even from failure. Finally, since projects are driven by students' passions and interests, this type of learning is deeply personal. Learning through doing is as much an empowerment model as it is an education model. It's putting students in charge of their own education, giving them a sense of ownership and even pride in what they create and learn. So far, this has been pretty abstract, but I'd like to make it concrete with just one example of how learning through doing can come to life. At Etsy, we run a making workshop with local high school students, where over the course of just a couple of hours, students get their hands dirty, literally, by making a terrarium. They then learn basic principles to turn that craft project into a craft product. By the end of the workshop, students create a listing on Etsy, which is what you see here. I want to dive into this example because it illustrates how a craft project can be a hands-on exploration of entrepreneurship. Let me walk through some quick examples of how we've done this in our own workshop. Here's one example. You can tease out language arts concepts in the context of branding and marketing students' craft product. We asked questions like, how do you select words to define your brand? And what language would resonate with your audience? In this case, your customer. You can practice math concepts with a pricing exercise. For example, we set up the scenario so that students have purchased the materials for their terrarium in bulk, and we ask them to calculate the cost per unit. And making is also an opportunity to develop learning skills and to develop life skills. This is just a short list of the sort of 21st century life and learning skills that making can foster. Beyond the concrete skills, from math to language arts to collaboration, making can be used to teach a number of different skills. You can use making to bring to life specific topics, for example, in the case of the terrarium project, the terrarium could bring to life a lesson on natural ecosystems. You can even use making projects to illustrate a larger abstract lesson, for instance, to drive home the idea that entrepreneurship requires initiative. As one of our Etsy students put it, I had more fun than I normally do at school, and I learned more. If I were making a commercial about the power of hands-on learning, I couldn't have asked for a better testimonial. So if you're feeling excited and you want to get started, here are a few tips for your first maker project. Tip one, choose the craft wisely. Think about what materials a craft requires and make sure they're affordable and easy to find. Think about the level of difficulty. Is it appropriate for your students? And think about whether the students will actually find the craft exciting and interesting. The whole point is to get students engaged. Choosing a product that doesn't excite them is counter to making. Tip two, understand and emphasize your learning objectives. Make sure the craft project provides clear opportunities to get across the skills, information, or lessons you want to teach. Create supporting materials like worksheets to further drive home these points. I recommend kicking off with your learning objective and ending with student reflections that tease out that learning objective and reveal whether you've done what you were trying to do. For example, in our workshop, we kick off with a broad question about what it means to be an entrepreneur, and we start off with a slide featuring Oprah, Steve Jobs, and your average corner store bodega owner. We end the workshop by going around in a circle, answering questions about what we learned and how we feel. Inspired, creative, and empowered are some words we hear a lot. 
Tip three, don't forget the share moment. After making something, students want to show it off. They also want to see what their classmates have done. Sharing out at the end of a project is a great way to celebrate and to build community. It's also a perfect opportunity to practice giving and receiving feedback. So if you're feeling ready to get started, here are a few resources you can tap into to find your first maker project. These libraries feature everything from craft to STEM projects and are a great place to browse to get your creative juices flowing. And that's it. Welcome to the wonderful world of making. We're excited to see what you create.